everyone once again welcome to the lecture of cgr that is computer graphics so today we are going to see types of curves part 1 in which we are going to cover introduction arc generation using dda and interpolation technique first let's we we are going to see introduction to curve generation so basically using curve generation procedure it is possible to model any random shape that is nothing but real world objects so as shown in the below examples you can see there are total four images first two are of shoes and second two of our chairs so as a human we can easily understand that those are shoes and chairs but how can a system can system understand whether they are shoes or chairs so for this purpose we have one particular domain that is image processing in which we use curve generation techniques to detect an object by forming the curves lines etc so in this domain particularly the curve generation techniques are used so first of all we are going to see the technique of using dda for arc generation we have already studied dda algorithm for line generation but how we can use dda algorithm for drawing an arc so basically to draw an arc using dda we must know differential equation of the curve dda is basically the incremental approach that is for a given x and y pixel or current position on the arc if we want to find the next position or next pixel on the arc to form a line between these two pixels we need to find the differentiation between differentiation in x and differentiation in y that is nothing but the incremental parameters and finally we are going to add this incremental parameters with the current parameters or current position to find the next new position or pixel on the arc so how to generate or how to form this differentiation if x or y but nothing but incremental parameters so how we are going to, going to formulate this differential parameters or incremental parameters for that as shown in the example below that this is the arc in which x c and y c is the center of the arc where the two point lines of the arc intersect they form the angle theta and the r is nothing but the radius of the arc so there is some process for generating the next new point on the arc so from figure 1 what we have got is x we know xc yc and r we have to find the next new point with change in the theta so for that our current position is at x and y which can be formulated as shown on the screen that is x is equals to xc plus r cos theta and y is equals to yc plus r sin theta where x and y are center of the arc and r is the radius of the arc so large theta increment implies bigger step and small theta increment implies smaller step so we need to find the change in the next point or the variation or we can say the incremental parameters over the change in theta so first of all what we are going to do is we are going to take the derivatives of these two expressions and after taking the derivative with respect to what theta what we get are the next two expressions so basically we are going what we get is dx by d theta and dy by d theta so here if we take dx by d theta where x is constant so it will by taking the derivative of the constant so derivative of the constant is nothing but zero okay plus derivative of r cos theta r is constant so r will remain as it is whereas derivative of cos theta is nothing but minus sin theta similarly we will take the derivative of y with respect to d theta that is dy by d theta is equal to again here y is constant so it will get converted into zero plus derivative of r sin theta r is constant r will remain as it is whereas derivative of sin theta is nothing but cos theta as shown here 
dx by d theta is equals to 0 minus r sin theta as d of cos theta is minus sin theta dy by d theta is equals to 0 plus r cos theta as d uh, uh, derivative of sin theta is equals to cos theta therefore after manipulating this expression so what we get is dx is equals to these are nothing but the variation parameters that is dx and dy that is equals dx is equals to what minus r sin theta into d theta dy is equals to r cos theta into d theta so from equation 1 and 2 these are this expression equations d1 equations 1 and 2 so from equations 1 and 2 r cos theta is equals to what x minus xc and r sin theta is equals to what y minus yc so by replacing values in equation 3 and 4 these are the, those are these expressions so by replacing r cos theta and r sin theta with values of r cos theta and r sin theta of x equation 1 and 2 what we get is dx is equals to minus sin as it is we replace r sin theta by y minus yc into d theta similarly dy is equals to we replace r cos theta with x minus xc into d theta therefore the next new points that can be calculated are as follows next two points are x2 y2 this can be calculated using formula x1 plus dx we already know the current position of the point x1 and we have already calculated the variation parameters dx and dy we will replace dx and dy with the equation 3 and 4 equation of dx and dy that is minus y minus yc and plus x minus xc so these are the final equations what we get for finding the next new point on the arc so what are the advantages of drawing an arc using dda is it is easy to understand easy to implement this can be implemented in hardware so it would be fast and what are the disadvantages the disadvantages are on scaling curves behave differently may not remain an arc as we are joining the two pixels with the line so we can say that the arc drawn by the TDA is not smooth it is difficult to perform clipping if I want to clip some part of the arc it becomes very difficult so need complex data structure of efficient implementation this was all about the DDA algorithm for drawing or generating an arc next one is the concept of interpolation so in interpolation what we consider are the set of control points to control the shape of the curve so there are two types you can use for drawing the curve first one is interpolation and second one is approximation or extrapolation in interpolation what happens is the curve passes exactly through the control points whereas in approximation the points or the curve do not pass through all the sampled point or control points. So let's take view towards our interpolation techniques. So in interpolation, there is one piecewise approximation. That is, for example, I want to draw a bigger curve. I have to start with taking the sample points and taking the subsample points and drawing a small curve. And similarly, to draw this n number of primes, that is, n number of small curves, and combine them to form a big curve. So, what are the steps? The first step is small curve is generated for subset of control points, as shown in the figure one. We have drawn or generated a small curve by joining the few set of sample points. So, all such small curves are joined to get final big complex curve. As shown in the figure 3 so we can generate this small curve by using some mathematical expression as shown below that is to find the point x y and z we use function of x of u function of y of u and function of z of u where u is nothing but the next step from the current point on the curve so it is what constant so let's say here this is our initial position the next position is at the fixed length similarly from if this is the current position 
this point is at the fixed length this is nothing but our variable u next is interpolation in interpolation we are having one method that is known as lagrange interpolation technique so in this technique so let us assume that the curve passes through n control points the points are xi yi zi where i can vary from 1 2 up to n so for example for con one control point that is point number 1 so we will have x i y x1 y1 z1 for control point 2 we will have x2 y2 and z2 there i have assumed x and z because i am considering the curve in three dimension so that's why i have taken x i y and z i so there is the next step is there is made of step side u we have already seen it before so coordinates of each point on the curve is given by the sum of each point as follows that is coordinate of each point can be find out, found out by using the function f of x of u f of y of u and f of z as we have seen here x is equal to f of x of u y is equal to f of y of u and z is equal to f of z of u similarly we have to find this parameter so this for example we will say f of x of u that is the coordinate of a uh, point that is x coordinate of the point so it is nothing but sum from i is equals to 1 to n of the formula is x of i b of i into u where x of i is the current position of the point considering from which we have to find the next point is x i which has three coordinates the point has three coordinates x i y and z i basically it will be and this bi u is nothing but the blending function we will see in the further slide that how to calculate this blending function so if we consider bi of u as zero then we can say that the curve form is the interpolation curve as the curve will pass through all the sample or controlling points so if we take four interpolation points to which we want to pass the curve so the blending function can be calculated as shown below as b1 u b2 u b3 u and b4 u then for if we consider blending function to be minus 1 then we have to set u as minus 1 similarly if we want b2 as 1 we have to take u is equal to 0 b3 as minus 1 u equals to minus equals to 1 before u equals to 1 then set u equals to 2 and if b1 equals to minus 1 then all the other blending functions will be set to 0 similarly if b2 is equals to 1 all the blending functions will set to be 0 so as we have to form the curve so one parameter should be positive and another should be negative to form the curve with this type if we say the blended function for this point is minus 1 this can be 1 again minus 1 1 minus 1 1 okay so this is how the we have seen blended function for the four controlling points so what is the generalized formula for if we take the controlling points n so this is the generalized formula for blending function that is bf is equals to u plus 1 into u into u minus 1 up to u minus i minus 2 divided by i minus 1 i minus 2 i minus 3 up to i minus n so this is the generalized formula for blending function next so how to found, find the individual coordinate of the point on the curve in space for example if we consider four control points then what is the individual coordinate of the points it can be found by calculating x and y so this is our goal find the x and y in interpolation technique so x is equals to as we have seen it is the function of x of u so we have found x of we have considered f of x of u as sum from i is equals to 1 to n of x of i b of i u 
So x of y, v of y, we have already seen how to calculate blending function by using analyze formula and x3, x2, x1 are the actual positions of the controlling points. Then we have to take the sum of all these points and we will get the x coordinate, individual x coordinate of the points. Similarly, we will calculate the y. The curve generated using about blending function formula is called Lagrange interpolation curve. What are the disadvantages of the interpolation curve technique is or Lagrange interpolation curve technique is the curve wiggles between the control points. Curve segments are not smoothly joined. And it is observed that if we take large number of view, the curve tends to be rough rather than the smooth. So, it is recommended that you keep the value of u as small as possible so that the curve which gets simulated looks smooth. This was for all for today. We have seen arc generation using DDA, then arc generation using interpolation techniques that is Lagrange technique and obviously where the interpolation is.